On February 13, 2020, Sid and Marty Croft received their long overdue star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The ceremony featured tremendous praise for the creative duo from some of the Brady Bunch actors, the creator of My Name is Earl, Greg Garcia, David Arquette, and a few surprise guests. On this special episode of Under the Puppet, we take you to the Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony for Sid and Marty Croft. You're listening to Saturday Morning Media. And now, back to our show. Welcome to the show that talks to puppeteers about the art and business of puppetry. My name is Grandpa Choco, and this is Under the Puppet. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this morning Walk of Fame star ceremony. I'd like to give a shout out to our fans watching our live video stream presented by our media partner, Variety. I'm Rana Godban, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, which is presenting this program. For today's Walk of Fame ceremony, we are proud to honor two brothers who have created some of Hollywood's favorite characters of all time. Today, Hollywood honors Sid and Marty Croft. Was the 2,687 star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But before we invite them up to the stage, first let me tell you about our honorees. Sid and Marty Croft have been producing quality family entertainment for more than 50 years. Sid started out as the world's youngest puppeteer at Ringling Brothers Circus Sideshow. After a year there, he moved on to tour the world, opening the likes of Ju- for the likes of Judy Garland and Liberace. But Sid wanted to be more than just an opening act. He wanted to be a fantastic, big puppet show. And here entered Marty. While Sid had been touring the world, Marty had been gaining the experience they needed to make their dreams a reality. Let's give them a big round of applause. So together, they went on tour with slightly adult-oriented puppet show called <laughs> Les Poupées de Paris, loosely based on the cabaret of Paris, which was a huge hit. Soon after, Hannah Barbera approached the Crofts to help create the banana splits for Hannah, Barbera, and NBC. And right after that, NBC asked the Crofts to create their own Saturday morning children's series. They picked H.R. Papensa. which obviously, based on today, was fans' favorite characters for their live shows. Its success spawned on feature film produced with Universal Pictures as a partner and distributor. By that time, Sid and Marty were household names with quite a list of TV shows. Just to name a few, H.R. Van Saff, The Bugaloos, Lidsville, Land of the Lost, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, Prior's Place. Let's be a little bit more excited. Yeah, you can say yeah a little bit louder, it's okay. <laughs> Far Out Space Nuts, Lost Saucer, The Croft Super Show, Wonder Bug and Bigfoot, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, and Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Let's do a big round of applause for that. For prime, for prime time, they created DC Follies, The Donnie and Mary Show, The Brady Hour, and Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters, all of which were audience favorites and remained in the top 10. Sid and Marty went on to create many other different live and scripted shows, 
including the two-time Emmy-nominated Nickelodeon television series, Modern Stuff, a remake of Electra Woman and Dinah Garn, which aired on full screen from Legendary and a remake of Segment of the Sea Monsters, which is currently streaming on Amazon with David Arquette starring as Captain Barneva Barnevas. In 2018, Sid and Marty received the Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. And this year, please join me in the celebration of Sid, Sid Marty, and HR Puff and Stuff as they celebrate their golden anniversary. And it's now time, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome to the stage our honorees, Sid and Marty Croft. But before we hear from Sid and Marty today, we have a few guest speakers who would like to say a few words about our honorees. These three act actors are best known for their roles in the beloved sitcom, The Brady Bunch. They worked with Sid and Marty on The Brady Bunch Variety Hour and have since gone on to successful acting careers spanning many, many years. Please welcome Maureen McCormick, Suzanne Olson, and Christopher Knight to the stage. to be on the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, which, hey, wasn't that one of the greatest variety shows ever on TV? And I got to be at the Hollywood Bowl playing with HR Puffs and stuff along with Susan and Chris, and it was amazing. And I just want to say, I, I love you, and more than anything, you're two of the nicest people I have ever worked with in show business, and I love you. anybody has worked harder or put more dreams and creativity into earning one of these stars than these two guys. But um, our Brady experience goes back even a little further with Sid and Marty. Back when we were in the first season of the Brady Bunch, there was this really, really, really cool show that they were filming a couple of stages down. And um, every now and then, Marty would come over and grab me and let me come with him no. to watch them film. And I got to see them do all of the opening credits for Puffin' Stuff. <laughs> so the lyrics to that are firmly embedded in my head. Um, I will not sing them unless... No. <laughs> but anyway, I proved it the other day. Somebody started singing it and I just joined in with them. Um, so that was really, really fun. And we did the Hollywood Bowl show. And thanks to these two guys, I can say that I played the bowl. 
And, uh, and then the Variety Hour, which still people will post on YouTube that they weren't sure if that show was ever real or if they dreamed or if it was an acid trip that they had. It was very surreal, but very, very fun to do. And uh, Sid is notorious for being the dream guy, and Marty's the guy that comes along and says, well, that's going to cost you this much. And we had a swimming pool on the Variety Hour. And I remember one occasion, Sid decided he wanted to have either dolphins or sharks in the pool. Both. 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 Why not? Yeah. And uh, somebody said, no, you can't do that because they need salt water. You know, they're, they're not going to live in fresh water. They'll die. And his response was, but how long would they live? <laughs> Anyway, they were always the greatest people to work with and so much fun and so sweet and kind and they look marvelous. Woo! So it's, it's my honor to be here and to say I love you truly. Let me just add something I think everyone knows that, um, well, they're the very embodiment of brotherly love. Um, it's also widely known that, that Sid has a legendary sense of imagination. What might not be known is that it's probably only surpassed by Marty's ability to realize it and to put that dream, hallucination, whatever it was, in front of a camera. And as colorful as it was, it was equally fun to work with these two gentlemen because they are that. They are gentlemen. Congratulations, Sid and Marty. Thank you so much. I would now like to give a shout out to NAPD Commander Corey Parker, who's also here with us today. And to all of our officers who are always working very hard in supporting the Hollywood Walk of Fame, thank you for all your hard work. And I'd like to give a huge shout out to the chairperson of the board of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, president and founder of the Hollywood Museum, and vice chair of the California Film Commission, Donnell Dadigan. But now, before we invite our next guest speaker, and actually ask to invite to join me on stage, Vin DeBona, chair of the Walk of Fame selection panel, who will be making a special presentation, a surprise presentation for the crafts today. Please join me, Vin DeBona. You know, I'm not sure if I should say who this is from first or last. So let's just do it this way. From perhaps one of the most renowned and respected producer directors of this age comes this telegram. Looking back on my childhood, there are precious few influences as profound, as wonderful, as weird as Sid and Marty Croft. Their success over the past five decades is remarkable, from Banana Splits to Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, from Lidsville and Land of the Lost to Electra Woman, Dinah Girl, and of course, H.R. Puff and stuff. The Brothers Croft provided me, indeed, generations of us with wildly distinct and unforgettable series and characters. Charles Nelson Riley as the magician, Yay. Billy Hayes as Witchy Poo and Sleestacks, Freddy and the Talking Flute. I can ask the question now that I couldn't ask as an impressionable kid. What the hell were they smoking? <laughs> wow. And I'd like to find some of that stuff now, he says. We should all be grateful beyond description for the artistry, creativity, and unabashed love and passion for imagination 
that these former vaudeville puppeteers put into their life's work. They're out there, psychedelic tales held us absolutely captive every Saturday morning, and their impact on us all has been utterly immense. How I wish that I were in town to be in person to celebrate my friends Sid and Marty Croft on today's long overdue honor. But I'm here in spirit and congratulations to you both. With love and respect, J.J. Abram. <laughs> That was very special. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker. She's an actress and singer who has starred in more than 60 films and multiple television series, including American History, X, The Vacation of Movies, National Lampoon, and HBO's Entourage. She's a friend of Sid and Marty Croft and guest starred in their hit Nickelodeon show, Mud and Stuff. Please welcome to the stage, Beverly D'Angelo. First of all, I want to say hello to everybody over here. We're sorry that it's all going this direction. It's so great that you came. If you could turn around and see how many people are here full of love for you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, what, a, what, what a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm so honored to be um, introduced as a friend. Um, I, 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 what, what can I say about these guys that hasn't been said? Here, here's the thing, okay? Now, okay, see my sunglasses? I'm very Hollywood today. Um, and I have been known from time to time to have a kind of spectacular Hollywood party, but I promise you that no matter who is there, they all want to meet Sid and Marty because Sid and Marty have, are, they're, they're in our DNA. They're like a, they're, they, they determined how we saw things as children and, and adults, really. You just covered the waterfront. Now, on a personal note, I met Sid when I moved into Mama Cass Elliott's house next door to Sid. I brought Owen here today. She's over here, Cass's daughter. And um, Sid was very, very close to Cass. You produced her specials too. Um, and her film. Oh, you produced the film. Let's see, I goofed it up. Um, but I have to tell you that from the very first day, I sat in awe, not, not just of his talent, and the life he's created from his gifts and what he's shared with us. But the way that he embraces life every single day. This man is not just a legend, but he's also my personal hero. He's really my idol. He greets every day with, with, with enthusiasm and joy. He lives in the light of love and all that fairy dust that, that's been sprinkled by, by Marty and Sid through their work. It's, it's coming from a real place. It's the real deal. He sees life as a beautiful thing and wants everybody else to also. And he certainly had that effect on me. I did get to work with them. I was asked by Sid and Marty to play a mermaid in their new show, Mutton Stuff. And I was excited. I couldn't wait to see who I'd be acting with. Uh, because, I mean, after all, I've worked with Clint Eastwood, Burt Reynolds, Liam Neeson. I mean, a whole bunch of people who, who probably even have their own stars here close by, so I wanted to see who the leading man would be. Um, they sent me the script with all my scenes, and there were many, and all my scenes were with dogs playing sea monsters, <laughs> which was as psychedelic as you can imagine, and it was fantastic. I loved it. I love you both so much, and I'm utterly grateful to be standing here celebrating today in your honor. Um, I do have to say, it's kind of ironic that you've got a star on the sidewalk because by sharing your gifts, you have lifted us way up above that 
into the sky. So we'll have to look down to see that shining light because you've taken us to the stars. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for coming. It's a beautiful day. Don't go away after because there's stuff in there. But thank you again for, for sharing the love for Sid and Marty. Thank you, Beverly. Next up, we have an actor producer who has performed in multiple series and feature films, most notably the Scream series. A longtime friend of the Crofts, he recently starred in their Sigmund and Sea Monsters reboot for Amazon Prime. Let's give a big round of applause for David Arquette. Hi guys, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Sid and Marty Croft, I am beyond honored to speak here on your behalf. Never been to one of these, oh actually, I have been to one of these celebrations before. For Kermit the Frog, personal friend. I'm big with the puppets, the puppeteers. Uh, you guys have helped me so much in business and given me so much. I can't imagine a world of television without you. You forever transformed Saturday morning television and late night variety shows with bold and innovative ideas. Uh, I don't know if any of you know that I'm a puppeteer myself, so Sid and Marty Croft have been a huge influence on me and an influence on my own personal style. <laughs> You've not only been good friends, but you've been a wealth of knowledge and information. From hearing your stories about working with Frank Sinatra and Liberace, to the first time you met Walt Disney, and the last time you saw Jimmy Hoffa, I can always count on you for wonderful stories and incredible wisdom. You're both pioneers in the business, and this is long overdue. Thank you and congratulations, and I'm honored to call you my family. I love you guys. Last but not least, this Emmy Award winning writer, director, and producer of several long running sitcoms, including My Name is Earn, Raising Hope, and yes, dear, having grown up on Sid and Marty Croft shows, he would eventually have HR puff and up, but I'm sorry, puff and stuff. I know, your voice is not coming out. Guest star on his show, My Name is Earl. Please welcome to the stage, Greg Garcia. In case you're wondering why I'm here, uh, I am here because Marty Croft is my oldest friend. It's not that I've known him that long, it's just that we're friends and he's old. <laughs> but I can kid with Marty because I absolutely love him and he is a dear friend. But today I'm here for Sid and Marty to not only congratulate them, but to thank them. Growing up in Virginia, I didn't have the kind of options that kids have today as far as their viewing. I would go down on Saturday mornings, adjust the antenna on the TV in the basement, use uh, pliers to turn it on because the knob was broken, and I'd have to watch lame shows like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street. Until one day, one day, the amazing world of Sid and Marty Croft came on the TV and I was blown away. Blown away. It had comedy, it had drama, and it was weird, man. It was really, really weird. And it opened up a part of my brain that I wasn't even using yet. My imagination soared to new heights. And um, since then, I've been lucky enough to do my own television shows. I always try to put a little bit of their weirdness that they put in me into the shows when I can. If you watch My Name is Earl, and I highly recommend it, um, you'll see that whenever they watch TV, they always watch Sid and Marty Croft shows. And so I want to thank you guys for that inspiration for sure. And thank you from everybody of my age group that used your inspiration. 
And I want to thank them for one other thing. And it's a story I haven't even told Marty before. When I was in college, my freshman year, my first year, my first week, some jerk in the dorms decided he thought it would be funny if he put LSD in the beer I was drinking without telling me. And that was a rough night for me. It was a rough night. I was alone in my dorm until I realized I wasn't alone. I looked around and I saw HR Puff and stuff. I saw witchy poo. I talked to a golden flute for three hours. Three hours. And I got through it thanks to these guys. So congratulations on an honor that's well deserved and overdue and thank you both very much. On behalf of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, we now declare today Sid and Marty Croft Day in Hollywood. And now it's the time that you all have been waiting for. It's time to hear from our honorees. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our newest Walk of Famers, Sid and Marty Croft. Everything, everything's been said about us. And you know, I've been spending the last couple of months really thinking about my speech because I wanted it to come from my heart and I didn't want to even have a piece of paper. And then I arrive here and the first thing that I'm told is make your speech really short and um, not only that, um, everything that I wanted to say has already been said. Uh, but I'm going to repeat some of the things. You know, we are so lucky and we're so grateful for all of these incredible, incredible years that all of you gave us. Because without the, the crews, uh, the actors, uh, the fans, the fans. We, we wouldn't be standing here today. And you know, I didn't ask Marty this, but I am right now. I want to share our huge star with those, it's thousands of people because we did 26 series and uh, 22 um, uh, uh, specials. We've been around a long time since uh, I think Lincoln was the president. You know? And so what I want to do is ask Marty if we can just share our star with those. It's millions of people all over the world that got us to stand here today and accept this incredible, incredible uh, honor. And thank you so, so much. Okay, in my speech, I was going to talk about um, Puffin Stuff. HR Puffin Stuff is my, out of all the shows we, we did, it's my favorite show. And, and I got to tell you something, as you know, uh, that show is celebrating its 50th year and it's in damn good company because when it aired, just right around that time, the Apollo moon landing happened. Woodstock happened around that time. Um, uh, 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 Comic-Con is 50 years old. We go there every single year to do our panels, and we've done 50 of them. What the hell did we talk about? You know, in the last one, I did say, uh, and, and some people brought it up today, and thank you so much for all your kind words. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, we weren't on drugs, but uh, I got to tell you something. If three presidents said they did not inhale, I did. Is that cool? <laughs> it's legal now. <laughs> and I'm still here. Thank you. Okay. Um, and you know who else is celebrating a 50th year? J-Lo. Yeah. And she's looking great. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're still here. I'm so grateful to wake up every day, you know. And um, also, I wanted to say that uh, the first time I came to Hollywood by myself as a performer uh, was in 1945. And uh, I came with the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus and they set up in this huge, huge lot, which is where the Grove is right now. And, um, and I don't know if you know this, but the Big Top held 15,000 people. It was big as the Staples Center. And we traveled with 1,800 uh, artists, performers, and... Uh, 50 elephants, 150 horses. It was huge. But I never performed in the big top. Uh, I was billed as the world's youngest puppeteer, and uh, I was in the freak show. Uh, and and uh, I completed the season. I got to tell you something. Uh, the circus was very, very dark for me. I was just a teenager. And not only that, it was pretty scary. And, uh, but I got through it because I was making 50 bucks a week and supporting my family. And so I had to complete the season. But then I, I spent some time to elevate my act and make sure that my act got even better. And I landed a Broadway show uh, which ran for a year, and I did my act on ice skates. So talk about freaky, that was pretty freaky. Um, and then, in 1957, I got the gold ring because I was offered one of the greatest jobs on the planet. There was a huge, huge star that was going to do a national tour, and and they chose me to be the opening act. It was Judy Garland. And we played here at the Greek Theater for an entire week because an artist, usually one night, some two nights, and of course she sold out. And, uh, and then after that, we hit a real big high. And you heard it earlier, we met for the first time Walt Disney. And Walt Disney said to Marty and myself, can I give you boys some advice? We weren't boys then, but we looked great, greater. And, um, and we both looked at each other and said, yeah. He said, always put your name above everything that you create because someday it's going to be worth something. So Walt I hope you're looking down right now. Look what's going on here. We're getting a star on the Walk of Fame. And you know, our, our mom and dad, I, I know they're, they're with him, looking down because mom, I'm, I know, is saying, yeah, those are my boys. And dad is still apologizing to me because when I was 10 years old, he said to me, uh, I, oh, he, uh, I, I saw an ad in the first Superman comic book for a marionette, which was $3.95. And I went to my dad and I said, can I get that? And he said, $3.95 is gonna feed your family for weeks and do you know you're a boy and you want a doll? And, uh, 
hey, Dad, you know what? I hope you're keeping track because I'm the big 9-0 right now. <laughs> and you better sit down, Marty. I'm not through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. One more minute. Okay. I mean, this has been going on for 62 years, you know? And I'm, I'm sorry that I tortured you for, for the last... 62 years, and if I live three more years, that's going to be 65. And let me ask you something. Will I be eligible for another round of Social Security? Because that would be cool. Yeah. And, you know, when I was in vaudeville, uh, they, if you were on too long, uh, the stage manager, or if you suck, the stage manager had this big hook and he would just hook you off the stage. <laughs> Marty, get the hook. <laughs> get the hook. Hey, uh, thank you so, so, so much for this. It's been incredible. And I thank Funko. Can you imagine what they've done? They've created the most incredible uh, toys, or what are they called? They're, they're called what? <laughs> Bobblehead. No, they're called... Pops. Pops, Pops. That's the word I was searching for. And thank you for uh, treating our characters with all that respect. I really appreciate it. And thank everybody for coming. And I'm sorry. I know the police want to clear up this space so the, car, the, the cars can uh, go through. But I got a ticket a couple of weeks ago, and I, you know, and I paid it, so we're cool. Hey, thank you so much. Right. Okay, I, I've got good news for you. I'm going to do 50 years in two minutes. <laughs> Sid is great. He always is good. And Sid, you are great. Sid started it all. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Not, okay. So I want to thank Rana and Anna from the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce that made this happen. Rana is great. She, she got ready to see. Uh, now, Sid's favorite show is Puff and Stuff. Mine is The Brady Bunch. <laughs> Maureen, Susan, and where is, where is Chris Knight? Chris Knight. They're great people. We did, we did a good run on the variety show, and we did have a great time at the Hollywood Bowl. And early in Puff and Stuff's career, we did 15,000 people that night but they never had his back, right? <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, definitely I want to thank Beverly D'Angelo. Is that better? David Arquette, who was great. He's our pal. And of course, Greg Garcia, who's created some great shows, and he's got a lot of talent, and I've been begging him to work with us for a long time. I think I finally got him. So anyway, let's hear it for the, they came, they showed up. It's great. Now, of course, Sid told you everything, and then the, the presenters, you told us everything. You've upstaged it, but I'm gonna repeat some of the stuff. So, we did have thousands of people that were creative, that were involved in our shows. I think. Who knows, could be 700,000 creative people. So I want you to know this star, they have a piece of this star. Because they, that's why I'm repeating it. <laughs> but I'm not gonna repeat everything you said. We're gonna lose everybody. But Sid, you did, you did great. Uh, so now, you know, we started as puppeteers. And they're still in our lives big time. 
the puppeteers, without them, we wouldn't be here today. Okay? Now, it started with a guy by the name of Van Snowden, who was unbelievable, and Drew Massey, and you know, Jim Henson and the Muppets, they have a lot of puppeteers. Well, we exchange them all the time. We use their puppets, you know, their people, and, and we use theirs. And we have a guy that is very creative, creative. Scott Johnson, who builds everything. We have a surprise for you. Uh, let's see what else. Now, I'm gonna make it short. The most important thing that I created are sitting in the audience. My three daughters, Diana, Christina, and Kendra. And let me tell you, Diana's been with me since she's 16. She worked her way up to a great producer and the COO, and she's my boss, okay? Christina is a great actress and a writer, and Kendra became a makeup artist, and she is terrific. In fact, today she was here. She was here doing makeup that she never did before. Now, that's, the gener that's my generation of my daughters. I now have grandchildren, and they're all here. You know, Taylor, Carson, who's up in Salt Lake, and the baseball player, Griffin. Now, Taylor, now don't tell anybody this. I have a great grandson who's about four. Maddox is sitting in the front row. He doesn't know why he's here. And, and of course, Christina has two kids. One of them's here, Drake, my favorite guy. And uh, so are my other kids. So I have a great family, and that's, that's what I created. So now, let's see what else we've got. See, I don't even have another page. So now, let me see. I'm going to leave you with something, because really, Sid told you a lot. You know, it's a full encyclopedia. Fortunately, he didn't tell it. But let me tell you the most important thing to me. For those of you standing here that didn't like some of our shows, keep your big mouth shut. And now we have a surprise for the 50th year. Two of our greatest stars that, that made us happen. Hey, everybody. Hi. You know it is? Hey. It's Puffin Stuff. How's everybody doing? Oh, oh, get going. Wishy oh, Poo. Oh boy, here we she is. Okay, I'm just going to work my way up here. We're there ending we with that. I'll, Let's I'll, sing I'll... Happy Birthday. It's his birthday puff and stuff. What? We end with that. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Birthday, dear puff and stuff. Oh, that's a Happy big mouthful. Birthday to you. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, everybody. Happy birthday, happy birthday friend. Well, it's that's so, a... boy, our creators like to talk. What? Well, now, I don't know if that's sincere from you, Witchy Poo, or not. I can't tell, because we've been fighting for so many years. Oh, well, but... there's nothing like a good fight and not a good makeup. You know what I mean? What's that? <laughs> Congratulations, you two. Now, this oh, is live thank television. You. We had we had no rehearsal, but they are great. Let's hear it for Wishy Poo and Puff and Oh, so good. Thank you. We're just putting our differences aside for right now, but we'll get back to fighting and carousing later, just like you and Sid. <laughs> so, Rana, Rana, thanks, Rana, again. And Anna, what's next? What are we doing? Rana, come on up. All right. There, oh, sorry, it's getting crowded up here. Apologies to Greg Garcia. He must be freaking out right now. That was very special. Thank you for the surprise, Barney. And I want to give a huge shout out to Funko Hollywood for allowing us to have the ceremony in front of their doors, in front of their news stores here in Hollywood. So please visit them. Thank you to Funko Hollywood. Absolutely. Let's hear it for Funko. And now it's time for us 
to unveil the star for our honorees, Sid and Marty Croft. So please join us in celebrating our newest Walk of Famers. Oh, here it comes. You know, Wedgie Poo, normally we'd be the flashy ones out here, but David Arquette's showing us up. <laughs> Many thanks to Deanna Pope for inviting Under the Puppet to the ceremony, and congratulations to Sid and Marty Croft. Well, that's going to do it for this special episode of Under the Puppet. If you have feedback, you can send it via email to underthepuppet at gmail.com, or you can connect with the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching for Under the Puppet. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you next time right here on Under the Puppet. This episode of Under the Puppet featured music by Dan Ring and was edited by Stephen Staver. Under the Puppet is a production of Saturday Morning Media and made possible by the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who've gone to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up a monthly pledge for as little as a dollar a month. Patrons get new episodes before they are released, behind the scenes information, and exclusive bonus episodes. If you'd like to support this show and the other fun content from Saturday Morning Media, become a patron. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up your monthly pledge today. You can also tell a friend about the show or leave the show a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Under the Puppet is copyright 2020 Saturday Morning Media, Grant Pachoco Executive Producer, all rights reserved. www.saturdaymorningmedia.com You've been listening to Saturday Morning Media. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.